We're going to talk about the importance of family dinner time now. I know we both did that growing up. We always had dinner with Absolutely. our parents. It was just like a given. Yeah. Well, research shows that time together is extremely critical in helping your children thrive. And here with some insight is the executive director of the Greater Good Science Center at UC Berkeley. Welcome back. Dr. Christine Carter. Welcome Hi, Dr. Back. Carter. Good to see you again. Hi, nice to see you, Christine. Thanks so let's talk about this dinner time. What are the benefits of um, having dinner, having the kids and the parents all together at dinner time? Yeah, well, the benefits for the kids of having dinner frequently with their families are really tremendous. So uh, maybe not so surprising is that kids who eat dinner five nights a week or more with their families are less likely to become obese or to develop an eating disorder. I think it's actually more surprising that um, those kids are also more likely to get higher grades, to be more emotionally stable, mm. and to um, they're less likely to have problems with things like depression, particularly for teenage gr girls, which is right. important. And, um, and they're also less likely to abuse drugs or alcohol, to smoke cigarettes. I mean, wow. it is really, the, the benefits of dinner time for kids is really powerful. So what is it about this dinner time spent together that makes it such a mm. useful tool that produces these great mm -hmm. results? Mm -hmm. I think it actually is, people often ask me, is it dinner time or is it just having a high functioning family? And I mm. think that there are two things about dinner time in particular. And one is um, that you're modeling all kinds of behaviors that are really important for kids' social and emotional and even academic growth. Yeah. And then the other thing is that it's a really powerful ritual or daily tradition tradition um, for kids. So on the modeling front, um, you might think that you're just kind of teaching kids manners, which is you might think is sort of superficial. Yeah, um, yeah. But actually, if you think about it, that's a manners are a really important social skill, important for kids' happiness later. So when I say to um, my younger daughter, Molly, Molly, please stop interrupting your sister, Fiona. Right. Um, she'll, she's learning about respect and mm. reciprocity. And yeah. Or if I say to Fiona, Fiona, I need you to cut that piece of pizza in half and share it with your sister or share it with a guest. Yeah. Uh, she's yeah. learning about generosity. So those are might seem like superficial kind of manners, but they're actually important social skills. Mm -hmm. So is kids. it important, to, you know, like I remember growing up, my, my sister and I would chat and then my parents would chat and then once in a while they'll chime in like, oh, share that, you know, share that piece of dessert with your sister, blah, blah, blah. But you know, sometimes we weren't always engaged. Does that matter? I think the most important thing is that your parents were sitting down with you so that yeah. they could kind of monitor yeah. um, things and that it's more common now than it might have been a, a generation ago or maybe when we were little to for parents to be so busy that they just feed the kids together. And one thing that I think is really interesting, there's this great study that comes out of the Harvard Ed School that um, where they were trying to track where kids learned new words, rare words, mm -hmm. and they found that, that um, the kids learned seven times more words at family dinner time than they did when their parents were reading to them at night. So they were tracking wow. 2,000 words, yeah, and wow. kids learned 143 being read to at night, and yeah. they learned over 1,000 uh, wow. at family dinner time. So if I just let Fiona and Molly eat by themselves and just talk to themselves, I mean, what are they, what is Molly's going right. to learn? Potty right. words. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Given, given how busy so many families yes. are with staggered working schedules and all that, it's difficult for many families it's to get together for dinner difficult. these days. Is there something else besides dinner that families can do that would produce the same results? You know, it's very, uh, people ask me that all the time, and I am hard pressed to come up with it. People say, oh, but we play Parcheesi on Sunday night, and yeah. it doesn't, isn't that going to do it? And I think that it's really, I mean, if you look at the results, it's five nights a week or more. Mm -hmm. So you, you've got to get that mm -hmm. in there. And then, but it's not, it's not necessarily reading because you're not getting all the, the modeling of the, right. um, the social and emotional things you're not it's not a ritual in the same way yeah, so when you say yeah. grace for example it makes even if you're not religious maybe you say a blessing or a toast right. it helps kids feel like they're really a part of something yeah. larger than themselves that's and right, that's yeah. very very important I what think. about going out to eat let's say the whole family just goes to like pizza for the night is, does that have the same effect I think that that's fine I don't there's no there's no good study that shows that but I certainly know in my family that's a great way to make it happen sometimes yeah. you're running from one thing to the yeah. next and you can go and just to really pay attention that this is the time that you're giving your kids to help them feel 
like they're a part of something larger, to help them, you know, be a part of your family team. So keep doing that ritualistic thing like grace or a blessing or whatever. Sure. What, what do you remember from your own childhood about family dinners? Oh, well, we had, my dad is very funny, so um, I remember laughing a lot. Yeah. And we would also get a lot of um, family history in there mm -hmm. about, you know, it's cr stories about crazy aunts and uncles. And, you know, the research shows that even if your family history isn't positive, it's very beneficial for a kid to be yeah. able to hear about it. So, well, what can, what, you know, busy parents are so busy, and maybe sometimes kids are just like glued in front of the TV. What can parents do to make it easier and get everybody around the dinner table to eat together? Yeah, you know, I think actually. Actually, the first thing to acknowledge is this is kind of a big social problem. We have something that research in many, many different disciplines shows is really important and powerful for kids, and it is nearly impossible for, for most parents to do it five nights a week or more because we're working straight through when kids need to eat and, right. and sports. So the first thing is really making some hard choices mm -hmm. um, for us. This year, my daughter wanted to do softball, but it met two nights a week right during dinner time. And knowing what I know about the research, I had to say, you know, it's going to be too hard for us to meet that five nights a week or more. Right. So, okay, that said, I think we don't have to worry so much about making it a long, drawn-out thing. It's really do it together. Right. You only need to have one parent there if you're a two-parent family. And, um, and use good, takeout if you need to. Good advice. Christine Carter from the Greater Good Science so Center at UC Berkeley. Thanks for all that advice. Sure. See you tomorrow. tomorrow.